You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone. I am super excited because I have Paul Homme on the line. Now, Paul is an expert in helping business owners and entrepreneurs tackle their finances so they can be better entrepreneurs, um, which I feel like we all need, (laughs) speaking about myself. Um, But thank you so much, Paul, for coming on the show today. Oh, I'm excited. Thanks for having me, Tiffany. Absolutely. Thank you. So let's hop right in. Um, When... I guess first we'll talk about why is it important for entrepreneurs to pay attention to their business finances? The, one of the biggest things I see helping people over the you know last decade is a lot of people are good at starting their business and they can start building it up, but they don't ever tackle their finances and address them. So then 10 years later, they're like, hey, I had a really successful business, but I don't have anything else to show for it except the business. So the earlier you can develop these habits, the better off you are and you're going to see a lot more success. And this could open up other options for you versus just putting all of your money back into your business. Mm, that is so true. And I will say that was something I struggled with with one of my businesses. And I can tell you, I'm like, OK, after all that work what do I have to show for it? (laughs) Like I just did a whole bunch of work for like a good year, year and a half. And there's nothing left. Um, And so I feel like it's super important. So now with this business, so Money Talk with Tiff, like I was just in my budget right before we (laughs) we have talk on the line. I was just in there playing around. So um, with that being said, let's say we're talking to entrepreneurs that they're pretty established. Um, They just never got into their books. What are some first steps that they can do in order to make that change happen? Yeah. First step is, you know, make sure you have a bookkeeper. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't afford a good accountant. At least have a bookkeeper. So you have books that you can look at and be like, hey, okay, this is because as entrepreneurs, we can always kind of fudge the numbers in our head. Like, oh yeah, we're doing fine. You know, but then when you look at your your profit and loss statement, you're like, okay, these are these are solid numbers. There's no gray. It's black and white. It's like either profitable or not profitable. So it teaches you some hard lessons where you're like, okay, I need to do better here and then maybe move some money around here. So First thing is, you know, get a good set of books so you understand stuff. And that way it makes it easier too when you when you do decide to go get a line of credit out of the bank or open another something else at the bank. They're going to ask for your books anyways and your tax returns, things like that. But starting to get that where you start looking at uh, profit and loss statements and then you act like – you basically treat yourself like you're a big publicly traded company. Always know your numbers. Know where you're at. Because people are like, oh, I know what's in my checking account. But it's like, well, yeah, but you don't know your numbers. It's like look at it, you know, on a quarterly and annual basis and be like, hey – you know, we're beating last quarter. Cool. Let's make it a goal to beat next quarter for last year. So you're always trying to grow. And then the next piece is setting up automations that move money around in your business because we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. There's money in the account. I'm going to spend it by the end of the month on something. It's like, oh, I did this ad campaign or, oh, we did this. We bought these equipment. So I'm a huge fan of um, automations. Automations are like the best thing ever created for finances because it takes the the human mind out of it and the money just moves. So when you get up in the morning and check your account, you're like, oh, hey, wait, there's money in that account. Where'd that come from? Oh yeah, it moved automatically. So it's a fun thing. Once you get it set up, people are surprised how easy it is once they get it set up and they just wish they would have done it sooner. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now I have, I've had a couple of guests talk about, you know, entrepreneurs and money and things like that. And I just wanted to see what your school of thought is as it comes to um, different bank accounts. So as an entrepreneur um, and even with your business, how do you, uh, do you only have one bank account? Do you have five? <laughs> like I've heard so <laughs> many different there's, things. <laughs> there's so many models like profit first is a great model. Great book. It's one of the things that kind of led me down the journey of trying to like simplify stuff because when I tried to set it up, my accountant was like, I don't, this is too many accounts. They didn't want me to have five accounts and a savings account on top of it. So dealing with that, I was like, all right. And then when I try to help clients, I'm like, hey, you got to read this book. And they'd read it and they'd be like, oh, I can't do that. It's too complicated. So we kept whittling it down, whittling it down. And you know, what is the easiest thing that somebody can get the most results from? So we kind of 80 20 did the Pareto principle of like, hey, if you could do one thing, have a checking and a savings account for your business. That's like the first thing I teach all my clients is have that. And then an automation that moves. I tell them if, if your bank will let you do it, have it, move, have it move money every day. So it's a smaller amount or like once or twice a week. Don't wait for the monthly to move it because sometimes that number can be kind of big and people are like, oh, I don't want to move that because I might need that money later. And even though they don't realize you can still get it later, it's just in a different account because we want to start growing your savings account without affecting your business. So if it's a small number, I'll tell people like, 
the next thing really says, what, what do I start off with? I'm like, just start off with a dollar a day. There's 21 business days a month. If that affects your business, then we got problems. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it's not going to break your business, but then you're like, oh yeah, that's easy. Okay. Now I'm going to do $5 a day. All right, cool. Now we're getting, you know, $105 a month. So it's like, it becomes a game where they're like, oh, how much can I put away? But if you're doing it automatically, you don't even see it. And then at the end of the month, you're like, hey, this account's growing. It's like, oh, cool. We're starting to build up a reserve account. And then from there, it just becomes more and more fun. You know what? I never thought about that. That is <laughs> that is a wonderful idea. I'm like, now I have to go back and retweak my budget because <laughs> I'm like, I never thought about doing just an amount per day. Maybe it's a dollar, two dollars or what have you and building my savings that way. So usually I do the method where I just take it off the top at the beginning of the month and then I try to budget, you know, from there. But I, yep. I like the idea of doing daily. I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's it's funny. It doesn't sting because I guess as humans, we're kind of like, oh, my God, I don't want to move this money because I might need it. And it's like, you know, so if your number. So like in your case, yeah, if you have a set number you're doing, then just divide that by 21 if you can do a daily transfer and then or if you can't do a weekly transfer. But it, it's easier on the mind when the money's moving all the time and you're not thinking about it and it's just doing its thing. And you're like, oh, wait, there's money in this account. This is super cool. And that's the first step of just setting that up and having that first automation. And it, it just changes everything when you start that. Yeah. And I'm even like, my brain is now going to personal. <laughs> my oh, brain yeah. is now going to investments. <laughs> like I'm just thinking yep. about all the different ways I could possibly implement that. So thank you for giving me something to think about. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so with that being said, are there any other tips um, that you have when you're working with within your business or working with clients in order to make sure that we have some profit at the end of the day? Yep. Well, one thing real quick, just to touch on, you led into the, the perfect example of how I think I, it's a choose your own adventure type thing where you're, I call it a velocity money machine where you're building a machine that just creates more and more financial velocity. So like you said, you start off with the business checking, business savings, then you have business or sorry, personal checking, personal savings, then you have personal investments, personal retirement accounts. You can set up accounts for your kids for college. You can set up health savings accounts. So people are like, oh my God, it's so complex. So it's either super simple or super complex. So I started off with the one, but I'm like, you can literally bolt on as many accounts as you want to this thing that are totally different, that just keep growing. And you start building this huge machine that money's moving daily. It's going into investments. It's going into all these different things. And it's like, it, it's so much fun when you start getting it going. Then, like you said, then it leads you to the next question of how do we make more money? <laughs> it's like, you know, and the, the thing I tell people love it or hate it is you have to embrace sales. You know, that's, I learned that the hard way. I went to college and I was like, I wanted to be a lawyer at one point in my life. And I'm like, Nope, don't want to go to school anymore. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna end up doing. Um, and I made this joke one time, like, I'm never going to sell anything. I don't want to sell anything. You know, like that famous, it's a John Cusack quote from, I think it was a can't remember the name of it. it was old back in the 80s movie where he's like, I don't want to sell anything bought or buy anything sold and just made no sense. But I was like, I was one of those kids and then got married, um, had kids and I was working as a stockbroker and I was just in the service and trading group. And I'm like eating my sandwich in my cubicle. And I'm seeing these guys that are dressed nicer and they're actually eating like food from the cafeteria. I'm like, what do they do? And they're, like, they're all in sales. And I'm like, oh my God. It's like, okay, so all the money's in sales. I got to learn to sell. And at first I was like, I don't want to sell. It's sleazy. And then I had a really good coach who was a uh, who taught us, he was like, sales is not sleazy. You're just problem solving. And you, when you change that mindset, it makes it so much fun to sell because I don't ever sell somebody something they don't need. If they come to me and they're like, especially with like my main industry uh, is I still have one gym left where I still run that. And then the main one do is consulting for other gyms. But somebody comes in the gym, they're 30 pounds overweight. It's like, it's it's not even a sell. It's like, okay, you're 30 pounds overweight. Why is, what's your goal? Like, oh, I need to lose weight because I can't keep up with my kids. And, you know, now I'm, doctors got me on high blood pressure medicine. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, here, we can do this, this, this. I can help you get to this point from here to here. Do you want to get to this point? Yes or no? They're like, yes. Okay, cool. Here's three options. Which membership do you want? It's like, I'm not selling anything. I'm just, it's basically like a Yoda adventure. I'm taking them on a, a ride of like, hey, you want to go from A to Z? I'm going to get you there. Pick one. You know, and it's like, it's so much fun. Yeah. And you absolutely. can apply that to any business too. Yeah. I was going to say, because I'm a former HR professional and I've worked in a bunch of different <laughs> industries and businesses and the salespeople are always the ones that make a lot of money. Yeah, um, they, they got the nice cars and the nicer clothes and eat the better lunches. You're like, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> they get all the bonuses, get all the trips. Yeah. No, but um, <laughs> all jokes aside though, um, that is one thing that I've learned in business as well, because I'm not... I usually consider myself not a salesperson. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't stand sales, whatever. <laughs> but I recently realized, Tiffany, you have to do this side of the business. Have Otherwise, um, 
it's it's not going to work. And so uh, actually, what was it like a week ago? I went to the library, found a sales book and I said, oh, I'm going to pop it open and see what I can do, um, because now I'm trying to educate myself more on that side of the business because um, I see how important it is. Oh, it's so huge because, you know, business have to have revenue. And like you said, that's why when you go to any big company, the guys that make the most money that are salespeople, unless they're like a director or a higher level executives, but you can go any sales thing. And, but if you switch your mindset, you know, cause everybody's had like, Oh, sleazy car salesman. Oh, this, cause yeah, they're, they're trying to force you into something where it's like, you're trying to find a solution for somebody. So if somebody listened to this, they could have a, a dry cleaning business or a, a sandwich shop. It's like, you know, it's like McDonald's, you know, love or hate them. They made how much money by asking if you want fries with that. And that really wasn't a sale, but it is a sale. Cause if you don't ask for it, it's not going to happen most time. Then they started doing that and started to make that. And then what's the next one? Then they, I mean, they just kept evolving their model. Then it was like, oh, would you like to, what was the old one? They took it away. Now you can't do any more biggie size oh, it or whatever super it was. Size. Super size. Yeah. Then the movie came out and ruined that super size right. me. But they made so much money off of teaching lower level employees, basic little tiny sales. It, it increased the bottom line. You know, you take how many McDonald's locations are there and you do that at every location. I mean, it's, it's insane the amount of money they created, but it's just by asking a question. And that's one thing that we don't do a lot of times as entrepreneurs. We're like, hey, I got this thing and I'm, and I, and I'm doing this and this and this. And we never find out like what the person's looking for and what they need. And if you ask a couple questions, man, you can open it up and find out what they want. And then it's easy. Cause it's like, okay, I'm not selling anymore now. I'm literally going to help you fix your problem. And it's fun. Absolutely. And I think that's another, like, that's absolutely a thing that business owners struggle with, um, including myself. And then also like not um, offering options or upselling. Um, I think that's also a missed opportunity. And maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I feel like that's also another opportunity that business owners miss. Yeah, it's huge. You got to have upsells, you know, different programs offer things like that, because you're going to get your customers. I forget it was a Kevin Keller, somebody with a thousand true fans, um, is one thing people can Google. It's, it's an interesting read. It talks about like if you have a thousand true fans, they'll buy everything from you. It's like you, you could have one thing come out and you sell them another and another and another and another. So if you just have one thing and then people are like, well, I bought your one thing. Now I guess I'm going to go buy stuff from so-and-so or on their program. So it's like, yeah, you want to, as your business evolves, you want to keep adding things to it so people can, your buyers can buy because they want to buy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this was awesome. I mean, <laughs> you have a ton of good information and a ton of knowledge around how to help small business owners. Now, well, while we're on the topic of sales real quick, and I know huh? I didn't pre-warn you of any questions, so I <laughs> apologize okay. for putting you on the spot, but like what is your favorite business book? Um, if you have one. My favorite business book is, I would say The Compound Effect uh, by Darren Hardy. It's one of my favorites. Um, it applies to personal life and business. He just talks about like the power of small actions, how they compound and build from there. So it's one of my favorite books. I try to read it every year uh, or at least listen to it on uh, Audible. So I have it, I have it so funny. I have it on print, Audible and Kindle. Just like so make sure I can always read if I'm stuck in an airport. It's a quick, easy read. But anybody listening to this that hasn't read it, I highly recommend that book. And you know what? That is it's so funny you bring that book up because I have it in my Audible and I just have not started it yet. So oh, you got to start. Guess, you'll love it. Right. I'm like, I guess that's the universe. Like, OK, Tiffany, go ahead. Like, there you go. <laughs> go ahead and get I, this book done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's a quick, easy read. I had some people like, oh, what? It was, that was too easy of a book. I'm like, well, did you pay attention? It has it had so many things in there that'll change your life. So it's like one of those books that I definitely recommend. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for coming on the show today. This was awesome. And I feel like you have helped, ex including me, um, other entrepreneurs <laughs> out there. So if they're interested in learning more about you or working with you, how would they find you? Uh, my favorite social media is Instagram, uh, Instagram.com forward slash P-A-U-L period H-A-L-M-E. There's a couple of fake ones out there. So I, even my bio says I'm never going to ask you for crypto. So if somebody tries to scam you, it's not me. Do not send me crypto because I'm not going to ask for it, even though I love crypto. <laughs> it's like, like no, I can't even ask, no, I can't even ask for it because there's those stupid imposter ones. Um, and then directly to my blog, uh, www.paulhalme.com. I update articles on there, give content, stuff like that. So, but Instagram is my favorite place. Uh, Instagram stories, when I'm traveling and doing stuff. So you can kind of see what I'm up to. And that's my favorite spot. Yes. Awesome. And if you all didn't catch any of that, I have it all in the show notes. So check that out. And yeah, the bots, they're ridiculous. I've had <laughs> ridiculous. so many different pages and I'm like, guys, this is not me. And if you follow me, you'd know I don't do crypto. So yeah. it's like, it's not that. me. Don't send it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.
Thanks, you too. Bye. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient. <laughs>